Dear friends, when we reflect on the vocation of the Apostle Matthew, the words of uh, this famous hymn can easily come to mind. Amazing grace, amazing grace. I was lost, but now I am found. So Matthew is really a beneficiary of God's mercy. And as we read today's gospel passage, something can strike us. There are two categories of people mentioned in the gospel. The tax collectors and sinners. We can ask ourselves, what is it? Why are they singling out a category of people as sinners? Aren't we all of us sinners? Why specifying sinners as though the rest of humankind or the rest of the people there, uh, apart from Jesus of course, were without sin? Why that distinction? Now let's begin with the tax collectors. The tax collectors, they are, they fall within the category of public sinners. Number one, they were working in collaboration with the Romans. The Romans were the people were colonizing the area, were colonizing the people of God. So if you are working with the colonizer, you are look, you are people who look at you as a traitor and a collaborator. That's one aspect. But tax collectors are also known for charging more than required. You know, there are some countries, people are happy when they are working in the customs. Because they know that there, they will make money easily. That uh, their salary might be small, but the mere fact that I'm working at the customs, I know how to make money quickly. And in fact, you can be so well, it's not, there's no secret in some places. You go in the house of someone working in the customs, you see the latest uh, TV, flat screen, fridge, name it, because they find their own way to charge or to extort, even to steal from the people who are importing things. So tax collectors were also looked upon as thieves. Remember the story of Zacchaeus, who was one of the chief among them, who said that, okay, if I took more than I needed, then this is how I'm going to fund. So now, when we are working for uh, a pagan uh, power, and at the same time you are taking more than needed, so people look at you as uh, the, the, space, the, 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 the embodiment of corruption, that you are really a corrupt person. And a pious Jew trying to live according to the requirements of the law of God will not associate himself with the corrupt people. So tax collectors were looked upon as public sinners. Now, apart from that category of public sinners, let's go back to the specific term sinners. In the Greek language, it is in the plural harmatoloi, harmatoloi. But that harmatoloi, which is translated as sinners, in the Hebrew Bible, very often, that behind that harmatoloi, it is the word reshaim, reshaim in Hebrew. Rasha means wicked, the wicked ones, reshaim. So uh, it, 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 is, it, it, it is referring not just to somebody who is committing sin from time to time, no, this is not the, the understanding behind the word sinners in the gospel. The understanding behind the word sinners in the gospel is that the people who, by the very choice of their life, their lifestyle, they are far away from the requirements of the law. So, it is not just somebody who says something in his words or his sin in his thoughts and then from time to time commit what you might call venial sins 
or from time to time you commit a sin as everybody does. But these people are people whose lifestyle puts them far away from the law of God. Like if somebody is in a mafia group, a mafia. So you know that somebody in a mafia, you cannot compare him with the, the old lady who I say two or three words against the grandchildren going for confession. So there are people whose profession makes them very far from the law of God. So we can think immediately of the prostitutes, that they like their very lifestyle is already making them apart from the law. Now there were also other categories of people like camel riders. Camel riders in Jesus' time, they were considered also as public sinners because the moment they charge your camel, if they are coming from one direction, uh, from one point, by the time your goods arrive another direction, the final destination, maybe half of the goods have disappeared. So if you were a camel rider, people would consider you already as people of bad reputation because the very life you are leading or the profession you are exercising puts you in a certain way of behaving that is not in accordance with the law of God. So the public sinners or the sinners the gospel is referring to are the people really we can call professional sinners, you see, that their very lifestyle is far, 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 far. Now, the shock is that Jesus makes himself the neighbor of such people. That is what the Pharisees are shocked. They don't understand the behavior of Jesus. It doesn't mean that uh, the prophets were not preaching to sinners. We see the prophets asking sinners to repent calling them to repentance. So whether it be Elijah with the king, whether it be Nathan with David, whether it be Jeremiah or Ezekiel, all of them were preaching and they were calling sinners to repent. Even John the Baptist, the people, tax collectors, soldiers, they went to see him in the wilderness and they were baptized confessing their sins and they even came to John the Baptist asking what church shall we do so John the Baptist also welcomed tax collectors but what is the main difference between Jesus and all of them Jesus went a step further in the sense that he himself made himself the friend or the neighbor of these people who are so despised and he, he shared the intimacy, sharing meals with them, something John the Baptist never did. That people will go to John the Baptist, the tax collectors will go to John the Baptist in the wilderness, but John the Baptist doesn't go to them. John the Baptist did not accept invitation to go and share meals with these people. So what Jesus is doing is something unheard of. It's something so striking that the Pharisees are scandalized. How can you associate with these people? Imagine you are in a, in a particular diocese and then you hear that the bishop has been invited in a house of prostitutes and is there eating and drinking. What are people going to say? People are going to say, hmm, there is something suspicious or this man is not giving a good example because there is danger for him to be corrupted by these people. And many people will not accept that you go and you are invited and you go there. Because this type of people, we don't even want to associate ourselves with them. In every society, you find that there are people uh, you don't even want to associate yourself with them. Now, Jesus is showing us that God's mercy is pursuing the sinner. So that's what Jesus is saying. It is not the people who are healthy who need a doctor, but the people who are sick. So myself, 
I did not come to call the virtuous or the just. I came to call sinners. That is why I am there. That is why you might be shocked, but I am the embodiment of God's mercy. I am God's mercy in person, incarnated mercy. Now, dear friends, what Jesus has done or what, what he does is really challenging and striking. But at the same time, is often misinterpreted. So we sometimes we tend to think that when Jesus is speaking this way, he's kind of encouraging people to remain in sin. You know, there the, are the people who say, well, you see, in many places, the more Christians you have, the more corruptions, the more, the more corruption. There are some people who say, before, in traditional Africa, you can leave your house or you could leave your house open or the door not closed. People will not come to steal because they are afraid of something within the traditional system that is going to finish you. Like if you're in Gabon, people are going to talk of the Njobi. That this person has the Njobi, if you go and steal, the danger is that you are going to lose your life. So some people used to say, yeah, you see, in traditional Africa, in typical traditional society, people were not busy putting burglars bars. People were not busy putting um, padlocks with sophisticated, sophisticated doors with different codes. The houses were very simple, but nowadays you need to have a watchman, a big fence, and cameras connected that will show you what is happening. And when you realize that you are living in a society where majority are Christians, you begin to wonder what Christianity has brought, has changed in the lives of people. That the mafia people in countries like Italy, they are using the image of the Virgin Mary to the extent that Pope Francis is there. Don't be using the image of the Virgin Mary in your mafia. But you will say, but what is wrong with these people? That they have become Christians and yet their behavior is not worthy of their calling. But dear friends, when Jesus say, says, I have come to call sinners, it is not in order to encourage the sinners to remain in sin. It is not in order to show complicity with them. Just like a doctor is there to treat the people so that they get well. So Jesus came to call sinners to conversion, to metanoia, to repentance. So if we are doing pastoral care of people who are considered like uh, the outcast and uh, maybe the lifestyle is not worthy of a Christian, if we are doing pastoral care of those people and we encourage those people to remain in their sin, we are working for Satan. We are not working for God. Like for instance, if you say, okay, let me go and bring out the people or reach out to people who are prostitutes or sex workers. And your work is there to just try to find out they can better exercise their function. Uh, okay, you know what? I'm going to help you in such a way that you will not have HIV AIDS, but continue in your work. Then you are not, you are, you are not doing the work of Christ. Christ said, I came to call sinners to repentance. Just like a physician, a doctor, is there to treat people, not to leave them in their sickness. So this is also another thing we have to bear in mind. That is why at the beginning of our first reading, St. Paul is telling the Ephesians, live a life worthy of your vocation, a life worthy of your calling. But dear friends, we are not talking about other people as though we are perfect. 
we are talking about ourselves. So Christ has made himself our, uh, our, he has made himself our neighbor. He has come with his mercy for us. It is up to us. So if we go to him, there has to be before Christ and after Christ. That is before encountering Christ and after the encounter with Christ. The encounter with Christ transforms the person. That is why you see somebody like Matthew, he left everything and followed Jesus. So it's not just about leaving a profession to now become a disciple of Jesus. It is also about leaving a way of life to embrace the new way of life according to the gospel. So it is amazing grace. God has done so many things for us. Let, let us thank him. But at the same time also, with God's mercy, let us reach out to people. Those who are far from the church, those whose lifestyle is far from that of the gospel, without judging them, let us work to call them, to help them, to come back to a life worthy of human beings, worthy of people created in the image and likeness of God, worthy of Christians. Amen.